Did I find an error in the BLS data? And this is uh, this has got me perplexed, my perplexities. All right, so I'm looking at the data set from the Consumer Expenditure Survey, 1989, right here. And then I printed off 89, 99, 2009, 2019, and the most recent one, which is 2023. Um, right there, 2023. And my process was, I was very interested what the price, the, the cost of rents were over that time, you know, year, you know, every decade or so, relative to uh, owned shelter, you owned your own home. So we got rents and we got owned dwellings. I said, I'd like to see how much rent has increased relative to owned dwelling over the course of annualized. I said, that's pretty interesting. And I started thinking, well, let me just do, I start, I, as I do, I take my white paper. I said, let me do other things too. So I started crunching the numbers for the, what you'll see is you have these cohorts. You'll see right here, under 25 years old, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and so on. I said, I wonder what the increase in income has been for these various cohorts from 1989 till today. And uh, I, so I started plotting. That's an interesting. So the, the, the highest by far was the under 25 group. Uh, they average a 3.9 odd, roughly, because I'm not doing the exact to the penny, but 3.9 uh, average increase each and every year. So that's pretty interesting. The next cohort that averaged the, the highest was the uh, the older people. They averaged a 3.46, the people over 65. So I said, okay, it looks like on average, we're at, and then the 25 to 34 group had a 3.32 roughly. The 34, 35 to 44, about 3.24. 45 to 54, I can't read my handwriting, but it looks like about 3.3, 3, something like that. Um, and then 55 to 64 is 3.4 something. I can't read my handwriting, but it's, it was roughly about 3.4 is the average. All right, that was the average increase in income annualized from 1989 to 2023. I said, that's interesting. Um, then I started saying, especially when rents are going up by, what well, rent was going up by 4.65% and owned dwellings was going up by 4.19% annually. So rents and owned dwellings are going up significantly more than the than the average income was on a, on a regular basis. I said, on a, I mean, on, on an annual basis, going back to 1989. And I said, utilities, food, all those things are going more than the income. I said, that's weird. Food is going up 0.3.52% increase each and every year, according to the expenditures on food. And when I mean expenditures on food, you can see, let me see if I can't find it for you, amigos. Yes, you'll see where it says right there, aggregate food right there and i said well that's interesting so how is the rents the income keeping not keeping up with these things uh uh then i said property tax was going up by 5.66 percent health care was growing up by 5.5 percent and then i did the one thing that this is where i started getting wait it doesn't make sense so i did aggregate expenses can you all see that aggregate expense expenditures 10.397 is the aggregate expenditures for the bls in 19 uh in 2023 so 10 point let's do it on this calculator instead of this where we got prop 10.3 10397 that's our future value and aggregate ex, total aggregate expenses in 1989 was 2.664 all right so 2664 is our present value that gives us a 4.09 percent increase in aggregate expenses so I said, that doesn't make any sense. Aggregate expenses are growing by at least 50 basis points more annually than income. Hmm. I said, that's weird. And this is after-tax income, mind you, after-tax income. I said, okay. So then I said, okay, well, what's our aggregate income? I said, okay, so our aggregate income, and we're just going to do income before taxes. In 2023 is 13698. 13698 is our 2023 income before taxes. And I said, let's look at it for 2019. And income before taxes in 1989 was 2597. And that gives us a 5.01%. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You're, how could income before taxes be averaging 5% a year and yet? If we look at these groups of people, they're not averaging anything near 5% a year. This is their income. This is after tax. But even that, we I, you can even do income after taxes. I said, this doesn't make any sense. Income after taxes, we can go here. We could say in 19, 1989, income after, after taxes, 2364. And income after taxes in 2023, 
was uh, 11,823. Still a 4.85% growth. I'm like, what? This is a significant difference, man. This doesn't make any sense. How could each individual cohort be growing at about 3.5% clip, but the aggregate is growing at 4.85? That makes no sense to me at all. I'm like, what? Where do they get a number? Then they, they do have a thing here where they you know they got a little um, note. They said uh, these estimates for income were calculated using two different versions of tax sim model 35 produced by the National Bureau of Economic Research (NBER). The first version was provided BLS on November 10th, 2022, and used the production of quarter one 2023 numbers. The second version was provided BLS on January 9th, 2024, and using the production of quarters two, three, and four of 2023 as well as 2024. I'm like, all right, well, that's fine. I mean, but this is way off. And I started saying, maybe there's something I'm missing. So I said, okay, let me go. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. You can see the total units there. Consumer units in thousands, 95,818. So I said, let me take my trusty calculator, 95,808 units. 818 we're going to times that by the uh right here see where it says 31,308 that's the income before taxes per unit 31,308 and we get two point um what do we get on that guy well, I want to do income after tax I think what do I want to do hold on a second let me pause it doesn't really matter so I did I got 2.9 right there and then their income after tax so again we take the number of units 95,818, we take the income before taxes per unit, 31,308, we get that, 2.99, all right, million. I said, okay, that makes sense. And then we take right here, we come over here, and we say, what do they have before taxes? They got 2.597 million, if you can see that right there, 2.597 million. I'm like, okay, well, that's a little bit off, but that's not that much off. Certainly not the equivalent of, I mean, you can actually look. We can start and say, okay, we have income before taxes. Um, well, I'll show you here. I'll, uh, hang tight. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I said, okay, what if we take 2023? We got 134,000 units. You can see right there. 134,000 units right there. 556. Five, so 134, 556. Five, and we're going to times for the average income per unit which is 101805 101805 i'm not gonna be able to get that so let's reduce that by th number three 101 times uh 134 and we got 13 million yeah we got 13 million 534 and here we got you can see income before taxes th uh right let's see can you see it right there where is it it's right over here 13 million 698. So pretty doggone close. Pretty doggone close. Either way, the numbers that the aggregate has, according to the BLS Consumer Expenditure Survey, are growing significantly more than the numbers that each individual unit has. And I'm like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Because if the each individual unit, which is all con part of the aggregate, I mean, you got the aggregate here, 6,000 under 25. 21,000, 25 to 34, 23,000, 35 to 44, 22,000 are uh, 45 to 54, 20, uh, about 24,000, 55 to 64, and 37,000 are over 60, over 65. And that equals the aggregate. And none of these units are anywhere near 4%, never mind even 5 the only unit that's even close to 4% is the under 25. And that unit is so small, it's only 4.5% of the total survey, the distribution of the total survey. It's just not, it's not meaningless, but it's just not a, it's not going to turn, move the needle much. It's like, where, what's going on? And I'm just thinking back, like, again, if people are screwing this up, what do they do with, remember they did with Social Security? They screwed up the Consumer Population Survey. And people were resting on that. Hey, Social Security says, you know, it's represented all this amount of income. It just wasn't true for their average retiree. And people are like, oh, my goodness, the average retiree has no retirement income. It just wasn't true. And again, it wasn't false, but it wasn't. They missed something, man. And I knew this even back in, I think it was 2011 or 12, something like that, 
I actually looked at the survey for what they're doing, the, the current population survey. I said, this doesn't make any sense. Where are their IRA distributions coming from? It wasn't, it was just, it didn't make any sense. But I, I didn't know. I figured they knew. And I'm like, no. I just, so I don't know what's going on with this right here. It bothers me, I'm not going to lie to you, because it doesn't make sense. How could the aggregate income grow at a clip that's significantly higher than each cohort? Especially when the cohort on average is significantly lower than the aggregate by far. And the only cohort that's even within spitting distance is such a small percentage of the cohort. It doesn't make it. And that's a, the lowest income, the youngest people. Anyway, I don't know about that. That's odd to me. And I'd like to, uh, I'd like to see more on that because uh, it, I just I don't know what to do on that. Anyway, just you know, more to this. But I think it's pretty interesting because if you actually look at the surveys, you can see they're actually asking people, hey, what'd you spend your money on? Just utilities, food, shelter, property tax, whatnot. But then they aggregate these up, and I think the aggregates are wrong. And that's, uh, I think that's a problem. All right. Love your thoughts. God bless. If you have any thoughts on that, or if you know an inside person at the BLS, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. I'll see you.